In this video, I'm going to turn my Raspberry Pi 2 into a web proxy server so I can filter web traffic and web requests on my local network. This way, I can deny different types of URLs, websites, domains, you name it. So to do this, I'm going to install Squid and SquidGuard on the Raspberry Pi. I'm also going to need to download a blacklist and then install the blacklist into SquidGuard. So let's get started. You're going to want to open up a terminal window, and I already have a terminal window open here. And then the first thing that I like to do is make sure that I have internet connectivity, so I ping yahoo.com. I'm getting a reply, which means I have internet connectivity, so I'll do control C and then type clear. The next thing that you're going to want to do is update your package list, your repository package list of software. So what you're going to do is do a sudo app-get update and run this update. Now this takes a few minutes, so I'll pause the recording and then come back when it's finished updating. Okay, the update is finished. I also want to mention that my connection to the Raspberry Pi 2 right now is over a remote desktop connection. So you can see up here, I have a remote desktop connection from my Windows computer to my Raspberry Pi 2 and I'm configuring the Raspberry Pi 2 and working on it remotely. Okay, so the next thing that we'll want to do, I'll just type clear, is install the locate program. The locate program is very useful for finding files and when you're installing new software you want to search for configuration files and folders and locate uh, pieces of the software, then having a finding program or a search program like locate is really helpful. So I'll do an apt get install locate. And if you're prompted to accept the installation, press Y and enter. Okay, locate has finished installing. So now I need to index the files on my computer so locate can find the files quickly. So we do a sudo update db. And that takes a second. Okay, I'll ignore these permission denied and assume that the update db was successful and that most of the files on my system were indexed. So that sounds good. Now, every time you install a new piece of software or download or create new files, you need to run update db to have those files as part of the index so that when you run a locate command, they, it can find those files as well. So now that this is finished, we can go ahead and start installing squid. So I'll type clear and sudo app-get install squid3. If you're prompted, type Y and enter to accept the installation of Squid 3. Okay, Squid has finished installing, and now what I want to do is I want to enable the Squid server to run on startup, so I need to enable the process. So to do this, I'll type sudo update-rc.d squid3 enable. Also, since squid has just been installed, if I want to be able to find those files and search for files, I'll need to also once again run the sudo update db command to index those files as well. Okay, so we've installed squid3 and we've enabled the service as a process on the system. I'll type clear. Let's see if it's running. To do this, we can use a sudo netstat command and do a new sudo netstat antp and we will pipe to grep and search for squid. And you can see that squid is listening on port 3128. Now for some reason it shows us the IPv6 service listening but I'm pretty positive that it's listening on IPv4 as well. So now that we've installed Squid, we need to make some changes to the configuration file. So this is where locate comes in handy. So let's say we want to find um, the squid.conf file. 
for configuration, all we need to do is say sudo locate squid.conf and you can see that right away it finds it. It's in etc squid3 squid.conf. Well, that's easy. So now all we have to do is run a text editor. I'll use a simple text editor, nano dash c, so I can see line numbers. And I'll go into root etc squid3 squid.conf and open up that file. And now I'm in the squid configuration file. So in the squid configuration file, we're going to need to make some changes. The first changes we're going to need to make are with the ACLs that define the local net. So to do this, I'm going to do a control W, which is for where is, which will search for different uh, words in the document. So we'll do a control W and say where is ACL space local net and hit enter. And you can see that it finds the first instance of ACL local net. And you can see that ACL local net source, the 10 network, RFC 1918's private network, internal network, private network, 17216 and 192168 have all been commented out. So this is um, something that we need to remove. So I'm going to remove the comment from all three of these lines. Now I need to allow local net so that um, the local network, whatever it is, whether you have a 192.168 local network or a 10 network or whatever, they'll be able to contact the squid uh, proxy server. So now I'm going to do another search. I'll do a control W and I'm going to search for HTTP underscore access allow local net and that takes me down to line 1209 and you can see there it is HTTP underscore access allow local net has also been commented out so I'm going to remove that comment and so that's the next thing that we need to do I also like to double check the port that it's listening on so let's just look for that for fun. Control W, where is HTTP underscore port 3128? And you can see there it is. Squid normally listens to port 3128. And there it is, HTTP underscore port 3128. And it's not commented out, so that's good. OK, excellent. So all I need to do now is Control X to quit. Uh, y to save and hit enter to accept the file name and we've edited our squid.conf file and we've exited and saved the changes and now all I need to do is restart squid for the changes to take effect so sudo service squid3 reload and that reloads the service also, maybe I'll take a look at the status of it. And we can see that the status looks good. I don't see any warnings. It's active and running, and it looks good. OK, now let's test to see if our squid proxy server is working. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'll run a sudo tail command dash f to automatically update and we'll look in root var log and let's just double check that that's actually the correct log I'm gonna do a an ls dash l of root var log and you can see there's squid 3 that's the one I want so the tail command that I want will be sudo tail dash f in root var log squid 3 access dot log. 
Okay, so there is the access log. And now to see if Squid is listening and accepting um, connections from clients, what I can do is, is go to my Windows computer, open up Firefox, and what I want you to do in Firefox is, I've already done it, but I'm gonna do it again, is go into Options, and then Advanced, Network, Settings here, Connection Settings, and change from No Proxy to Manual Proxy Configuration and put in the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and the port number 3128. You can see I already have mine loaded here. Uh, 192.168.3.77, port 3128. If you don't know your IP address of your um, Raspberry Pi, just do a sudo if config and it'll tell you. See, I'm 192.168.3.77 on Ethernet 0. And then I'll run that tail command again. There it is. And now, once you have these settings set, click OK. What you can do is, I'll just open up a new window here and start searching. So I can go to ESPN.com. And as I go to ESPN.com, or as I go to, let's say, yahoo.com, you can see Yahoo comes up here and you can see the activity in the Raspberry Pi. Let's try again with ESPN. ESPN.com. You can see the files and the activity, the movement of the requests here in, in the squid access log. Let's take a look here. There's Google, Yahoo, let's see here. Let's look for another one. Let's say, um, maybe I need to close this and open up a fresh one. There we go. There we go, you can see the activity happening here now. I'll go to my website, dancecourses.com, and you can see, there it is. Look at all that activity and all the files and all the requests that are actually going through the Squid web proxy server. So now, in my Windows computer, every time I request a web page, the request is sent to the Raspberry Pi Squid proxy server, and then it basically okays and permits that request, and then that request is allowed to go back to me. So you're basically using the Raspberry Pi and Squid as a proxy for all of your web requests. Now this is not a transparent proxy because all I would need to do to stop this is just go back into options in Firefox and turn off, right, go to advanced and turn off the settings and go to no proxy and then I'll just go directly through the gateway to the internet. But right now everything is being proxied through the proxy server on the Raspberry Pi. So that's pretty cool. So that's step one. Now you have Squid working, and the next step is to install SquidGuard.